Man, I don't know. I, I don't like that thing out there. I got a hole in it and putting them rocks at the head of my uh, bed. Man, I want to see Jesus in the sky. And I don't want to rise first. <laughs> Somebody said, well, I want to rise first. Well, die, die in the Lord, and you will, but I don't want to be with you. Thank you, Jesus. I want me and my wife, I want to be home, and we're just out in the yard looking up, and when he peers, and I want to grab her hand. I had a, a dream one time at right that sister and I got married that times got so bad and uh, th everybody knew that the end of the world was just, was just here. I need some hangers without this. I'm using these for Saturday, next Saturday, and give me some fresh hangers. And i tell you, this scripture right here <laughs> was one of the scriptures that has been with me for uh, since I was 19 years old, between 18 and 19, when I got uh, started out preaching on the streets. This is Mark. Sixteen and fifteen. Jesus said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Thank you, Jesus. Here, and I'm going to keep this marker here because I want to go over this and uh, reserve this for the Lord willing next Saturday. Is it six? Isaiah, I tell you, the Lord gave me this. Told me this, and I first learned to read, and that was the Bible. The post of the door moved, and the voice of him that cried. The house was filled with smoke. If you look that up in the Hebrew, it would be uh, Greek. Uh, Filled with smoke would be a, a, a great cloud. The Greek or Hebrew, you see, it was a cloud. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King of glory. My eyes have seen the King of glory. You know, there's what? Uh, when I saw the Lord myself in 1967 when he stood at my feet <clears throat> and touched me in my hand palms of my hands and gave me this message of Jesus <laughs> six weeks after I come out of this too much I was hitchhiking because the two biggest Pentecostal churches in the country that I was evangelizing with when I obeyed what Jesus told me well let me in the churches no more that was to do all things in deed and in truth in the name of the Lord Jesus and while he held my hands and he paused and he said and that means what a baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus. Six weeks I was thrown out at two dimes and a penny. But I tell you, I, I didn't bow and I didn't burn. And it was about six weeks of this, I guess. But hitchhiking, trying to get to to a meeting in Chattanooga, Tennessee when I got to Birmingham. It took me three days hitchhiking to get to Birmingham. Day and night, getting a little ride here and there. The Lord spoke to me. A, a preacher friend of mine saw me at a bell telephone phone book trying to dial his number. He was going to work and had one dime in my pocket. He stopped and picked me up and, brought, and carried me to his house. Let me bathe and shave and fed me and slept a while. He carried me to Chattanooga. 
I had a preacher's meeting coming at it that that evening. Four hundred preachers was gonna meet all over Louisiana and Port of Georgia. I mean all over uh, uh, Georgia and and in joining states like Chattanooga, Tennessee. Four hundred of them. And I was gonna to preach to them that Friday night before I opened on Saturday. I tell you, my world changed from Birmingham to Chattanooga. God is still. You know, some people will back away. I need some fresh handkerchiefs up here. Some people will back away from uh, from standing up for Jesus. I tell you, we need to stand up for Jesus. Jesus said, if you be ashamed of me, and of what? My name. You can believe this or not. People that have... You know, God gave me that song right after that. I got a gold record on that one. Or they did out channel ever who was old me at the time. And I did, but they got it. Because I didn't care. All I want is a golden crown when I get to heaven. They can have all that other stuff down here. And if, if she's turned out we make it to heaven, I've requested that God, if He won't let her live in my mansion, to her to build her one across the street. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I love that woman. And she loves me for me. And I told her there, I said, I, I, I was four left. I said, I love you so much. And I said, I appreciate you loving me for me. There have been people claim they loved me before, but they, it was the preacher. I don't want to be loved because I'm a preacher. I want to be loved because I am uh, who I is. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. You know, you, you got that. You know, you, you know what I'm talking about? Well, as long as you're up on top of the ladder and you got somebody else up there with you, preacher, man, they're your friend. They'll let you go through, through a, some kind of a trial and they got to go through with you. They, they won't be seen in a country mile. Thank you, Jesus. But I appreciate the Lord. And anyway, I, I had this, I was in a fast. And it looked like the whole world. And it is somewhere. And I, I'm telling people, I don't talk to much people. But if you read the Bible, it's happening. The book of Revelation is happening. That beast, not physically, the sea represents the people. That beast is rising up right now in the sea. You can see it. They soon going to make a law against Christianity. They're already talking about putting chips in people. In Washington, God didn't say they'll put a number on your head in your head. It has to be the chip. So if you take that, oh, they're gonna tell you it's all right, and and you ain't gonna have to have no money no more. Your money, you'll never see that again. They put that uh, in some kind of a file, and all you do. You can take it in your hand or your head. And you go by, you just run your hand over the new machines that's coming out. And it'll deduct what, what they uh, allow you to have in that account. And once you get that in your hand, and that in your head, whether you think you do it ignorantly or not, 
One day the end is going to come and you're going to be looking. You're going to be down yonder, quickly down yonder. You're going to be looking up. You're going to see all those that's dead in Christ with Jesus. And then those that rose from the dead that died in Christ with Jesus in the new world and a great new city called New Jerusalem. And you're going to be burning in hell because your belly was your God. And the cares of life. You may not like this. But as I read this King James Bible, he's getting closer every day. I've been telling people now for more than a generation, you need, I never told you that, that I told you if you're on good, I never told you to make it out there. I told you that you better get you a place in the country and learn how to live out of your gardens. Learn how to live over an acre or two acres of land. Because one day you're going to be buying your groceries with a number in your hand or head. And once you get that, you better enjoy yourself. Because when you die, if the rich man lifted his eyes up in hell and saw Lazarus up yonder, in Abraham's bosom, one day when you die, or Jesus comes, when He comes, you will be cast into a lake of fire, burning with fire and brimstone forever and ever. And those that survive, those that, that refuse to deny Jesus, can't you see it in Washington? Didn't you see how one of the states elected a of a lesbian to be a governor the other day? Who do you think that woman Jezebel is? That woman Jezebel is this lesbian homosexual spirit. You see where the president sometimes back allowed 200,000 men to get married? And the Congress stopped it, said that ought to be something the nation votes on. In each state. And I, I didn't, I, I heard, I don't know, I didn't keep up with all that. But I heard that 40 some states voted against it and they stopped. So well that gave us a little time, didn't it? They was going to say we need to take it state by state. I think Massachusetts... And one or two other But anyway. <laughs> I'm telling you something. If you're a man, you better start acting like a man. Get them women bloomers out of money, yo. And get you some man britches. I don't care if you don't like that. I'm telling you, it's time for men to start looking like men and acting like men. Get these air bottles out of their ears. I don't believe in women wearing them, but the men for sure. Amen. I don't care if you don't like it. Your blood ain't going to be on me. God said, come out of that. Be separated. But God so loves the world. He's not going to pat you on the back. God so loved the world that He gave you a way of escape. He gave you a door of opportunity to get out of this evil. Jesus said, I'm the door. If any man comes through me, thank God, God's going to clean him. God's going to cleanse him. If you come through this door, all them weights and besetting sins, them lust, them worldly ways, and them worldly looks, is going to shed off of you. It may not happen in a second, but you'll feel it. Thank God. You ain't going to have to have a preacher get up every Saturday or Sunday and hammer you over the head. You get the Holy Ghost down in this old 
temple of yours, he's going to guide you. He's going to lead you. He's going to guide you. And all truth. I got the, I guess I got the best woman in the world when I married Sister Terrell. And if you, uh, maybe ever who you married was the next best, but <laughs> she was the best. Thank you, Jesus. So ain't nobody can squeeze in and over her. She is the best. And she got the sweetest testament. When I tell you, I just loved her. Hear her tell it. She told it to me a few times. And I tell you, when she got saved on her job, right up here, she lived somewhere around Stone Mountain. And the boss set her off. And she, and she went to a Baptist, big old Baptist church and got the preacher to pray with her. Thank God. And got saved. Accepted Christ. Nobody started bouncing on her. She said that when she got up and started getting ready for I guess she was off the rest of that week. Might have been on a Friday. But anyway, when she went back to work, said she was dressing up, you know, like she did because they required you to do this and that, you know. Some of these jobs for women, you have to wear women, a man, you have to wear some kind of a pants and stuff like that. And she said she got up and started getting ready and putting her makeup on and said... Just nobody preached. She ain't ever heard me preach. And then Baptist preachers, their wives look like uh, Jezebel's cousin. So, you know, <laughs> if a pastor's wife looks like Jezebel's cousin, he ain't going to preach against nothing. Well, I guess I'll throw that out. I didn't get no votes on that one, but anyway, move it off of the list. But nevertheless... The Bible is still the Word of God. Jezebel was still the Jezebel. <laughs> the Bible says she painted up, didn't it? Well, we'll get over that, but it's in there. Hallelujah. One old boy said, if I can't say hallelujah till I can, what I'll say, well, I'll say happy Hallelujah, and later on you'll start saying hallelujah. Praise God. And the Lord started dealing with her. Thank the Lord. She ain't never heard me preach. My preacher might have run her off. But I tell you, the Lord dealt with her. Now you won't find a, no more dedicated and modest and holy person. You may find somebody as well, but not, not better. I tell you. And the Holy Ghost went. And, and she came to one of my meetings over in Atlanta. And somehow she got to talk to me. And uh, she was telling me her experience. Because she sat down at all. right back to her. My, I got cross-eyed. <laughs> I couldn't look over here. This eye would pull it over here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory. I thought, who is this? But she looked so young, you know, and I thought, Lord Jesus, give me a grandpa. And <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, I, but, and she somehow or another got to talk to me. I, I don't know how long it was. And she was telling me how the Lord, when she started, heard about me, somehow come to meetings and, and, My preaching was so straight. I put one in. I didn't want my hair to turn this color. And it began to uh, sort of show up a few old gray mares in there. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Glory. And I was putting some kind of a reach up her. And she recognized it. And she thought, now he ought not to be doing that. <laughs> Well, I ain't doing it no more. <laughs> and hadn't in a long, long time, even before we got 
murder, I mean married. Thank you, Jesus. But I'm telling you that she hadn't heard me preach. She did right. But God began to deal with her about them little things in her ears. And that stuff you run around your neck. And where I think they sort of required women of where she worked. But she went to her boss and talked to him. And I believe if I understood it right. But anyway, she, he let her. Anyway, she started wearing dresses. Thank the Lord. Because the Bible did say it's abomination. And nobody, she ain't never heard nobody preach that. But the man called Jesus, his word teaches that. When he gets in your heart, he'll teach you his doctrine. He, he, you don't have to have the preacher up here to teach, say this and that. He'll teach you. His teachings. Jesus said, if you abide in the doctrine of Christ, you abide in me and my word abide in you. You get to the place, you can ask what you will, and it will be done unto you. And she was telling me, uh, when I did get to talk to her, how the Lord saving, saved her, and I tell you, my heart got up in my mouth, and it's hard for me to keep it out of it. Thank you, Jesus. Pleasure when I see her. But anyway, uh, and I like she didn't look to be very old, you know, and of course she wasn't. And I didn't know how in the world I was going to find out how old she was because you don't ask women that. But somehow or another, I don't know how it come about, but when she said she was 27, my heart went to heaven. Hallelujah. Glory. She was such transformed and she never heard me. Somebody told her about me, but because I, uh, she, she uh, could recognize it in my heart. Hallelujah. But anyway, she, somehow she got through that. But you see it now. She didn't only get through that, she got through me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. But I'm going to tell you, I love her experience. Right out of a Baptist church where about all the Baptist women were bitches. And the Bible still says it's abomination. Now what the new Bible says, but the King James, original King James Version that I read out of and which you should read out of because the modern Bibles has cut out a lot of Scripture. Even the New King James has left off four or five verses of the last chapter of Mark. And they don't say Holy Ghost no more in them. It's Holy Spirit. I believe when it says Holy Ghost, you need to say Holy Ghost. When it says Holy Spirit, which is three times, say Holy Spirit. You may disagree, but I can prove you right now there's a difference. But you probably wouldn't want me to prove to you, but I love the word Holy Ghost. Everybody say Holy Spirit. See how easy that is? Now say Holy Ghost. See how your throat jumps? I tell you, you start saying the Holy Ghost, your heart will jump. I said, your heart will jump. How many believe we ought to say what the Word says? They got word of the Latin, Latin Bibles. All of them are taking out them, them uh, words that they got. The, the forefathers got persecuted on. But I'm going to stick to the straight as a gate, narrow as a way. And Jesus said, I'm the vine. And you the branches. I'm the vine, and you the branches.
And if we'll open our hearts, he said, the word is nigh you, even in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith. I believe that's the reason a lot of us ain't got faith anymore. The Bible is a word of faith. And John 15 said, I'm the vine and you the branches. And if you abide in me, in my word, which is in the beginning was the word, John said. The word was with God. The word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And all things that was made then, didn't say then, but all things that was made, was made by God without God, nothing was made that was made. Now the devil done got in. Making all the excuses. The Bible said they were all in the upper room. I want to teach on that some. In one accord. In one place, in one mind, in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven. As off a rushing mighty wind, they were all filled. It didn't say Holy Spirit, it said with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Jesus didn't talk, tell him to get in the upper room and join the Baptists or the Methodists or the modern day Pentecost. He said, you get in the upper room and you tarry and you pray until you be endued. Looked to me like they set up about 10 days. Churches has not been endued with power. They were all after 10 days there come a sound from heaven as off a rushing mighty wind and it filled all that upper room which was 120 people in there or more. About 120 it said. Could have been 130 or 118. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in another tongue, other languages which was on that day of Pentecost, there was 50 countries of the world. Pentecost, every 50 years, they celebrate a day of Pentecost from all those countries. And Jerusalem was a spot where they were that time. I already done it every 50 years there, but it was sort of a central part. And there, when that Holy Ghost came and it came out of the room, down in the streets, the people that were Together from all these 50 countries heard everybody. The Bible said they appeared on them cloven tongues like as a fire set up on each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other languages. As the Spirit gave them utterance. And everybody in 50 countries Heard them speaking, and and there what language they had. Somebody out of that 120, they heard them speaking in 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 their language. They said, "What is this? Where have such a, a happening? We need it again. We need another day of Pentecost." to get 50 countries' attention. A hundred countries. Ain't nothing else going to get people's attention but the Holy Ghost. These little old missionaries going over here, over yonder with these new Bibles that won't even say Holy Ghost. And nowadays, it ain't going to help folks. It's going to take this original translation they say the King James, if it was off any, it wouldn't even be off a percent. Only two words is not in the King James. It wasn't in the original Greek and Hebrew translation. 
And it wasn't like it is today. You know, nowadays they try to uh, change it, soften it up. Well, when Jesus preached and his apostles preached, Paul preached, they said the sayings, the